Good morning and welcome, Patriot Radio News Hour. I'm Joe Jaquin, CEO of the Patriot Trading Group, and our toll free number eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. The website at allamericangold.com, and uh, it is what day is? I don't even know what day it is. Is it Wednesday or Tuesday? Tuesday or Wednesday? I don't know. Uh, I'm losing track. That's how busy it's been. I want a, a couple of quick updates. Uh, metals programs. Uh, we have started shipping first quarter metals programs. Uh, we should be done with the metals programs by the end of next week. Uh, all things, all things being said. So if you're in the metals programs uh, and uh, you you are waiting here. Uh, you'll get notified if you're a pickup in Phoenix or Colorado. Uh, those will be next week. Uh, but we have started uh, shipping out uh, the metals program. Speaking of the metals, gold, gold's up a ten spot here. Uh, 1932 silver's up twenty cents, twenty five dollars. And yesterday, Jason, so just an important, it, more of a technical thing. I don't know that you know. And again, on the paper trades here, uh, but. There was a gap in the chart at 1909 that gold filled yesterday, and equally is important that close above 1920 that happened yesterday. Uh, both very bullish chart indicators if you're into that thing for gold, and then uh, gold's up big today. Uh, by the way, crude oil, we really got to watch out here. Uh, crude oil, uh, NYMEX crude, just under 115 a barrel, Brent crude. A hundred and twenty dollars a barrel. Uh, Brent crude, primarily used in Europe, uh, but we had inventory reports out. Uh, and Jason, once again, big declines in oil inventories. This thing's going to get a lot, lot worse before it gets better. Two of the biggest commodity traders in crude oil, uh, within hours of each other this morning. Uh, are now saying crude oil will be at least $150 a barrel this summer, Jason. Yeah, demand will go up, especially in the northern hemisphere. You know, and I'll tell you right now, Joe, uh, I have never heard more people around me talk about taking vacations than I have this year. And uh, let's face it, if they wanted, you know, if the powers that be wanted there to be an oil emergency, uh, ending coronavirus so suddenly a few weeks ago is a great way to make everybody want to go on vacation and, and use a whole lot of oil, Joe. Yeah, and, and uh, I will say this, diesel. get re- And already diesel's already more expensive, and you think about gas and how expensive it is. Uh, they're, they're talking about situations this summer where gas stations will be out of diesel uh, the stocks of diesel fuel are incredibly low, uh, and a, even a bigger worry in Europe, uh, which gets about half of its diesel fuel from Russia, the other half uh, from Middle Eastern countries. Today, Russia said it will no longer accept dollars or euros for uh, its gas products. Uh, that all nations that they say hostile to Russia, which includes us, obviously us, all of uh, Europe, will now have to pay in rubles. So, Jason, uh, and again, that just makes sense because Russia's like, hey, you won't let us spend dollars or euros or anything else. So guess what? If you want gas, if you want fuel, you're going to have to pay us in rubles. That's correct, Joe. Yeah, and uh, that's... That's not going to make things better, is it, Joe? That's going to make things a lot, <laughs> a lot crazier. So, and I think we're going to see a lot more of of all kinds of different currencies trying to to, to fill some gaps if if a country's going to go away from dollars, Joe. Yeah, and I got a call yesterday uh, from a wheat farmer in Kansas, uh, a listener to the show, and he wanted to, to first of all thank me. It was everything you're saying is right on, but let me tell you, it's even worse. Uh, one of the things he, he was saying that f- fertilizer cost, he goes, he wanted everyone to know they're up 400%. So think about this. If the farmer 
uh, was paying, let's just say, I don't know, you know, a thousand dollars for a ton. Uh, it's now four thousand. He said one of the things that that people aren't talking about is the other chemicals farmers use. So you know, we talk about the fertilizers, but you know, and I'll I'll just call it Roundup for lack of a better term, the weed killers and all these other things. He said a gallon of these chemicals was about twelve dollars last year. It's now fifty. He said that it, you know, we talk about the drought here in the West. Remember, this is a Kansas wheat farmer. Said they got their first rain in over five months. It's incredibly dry in the Midwest. Uh, parts for, for equipment. He goes, things that used to cost 50 bucks are $500. Uh, he said the tractors and the combines. 20 gallons an hour. That's the amount of fuel these things contain. And he goes, even, uh, you know, farm diesel, at least in Kansas, I don't know, maybe this is everywhere, farm diesel, you don't pay taxes. And he goes, it's still $4 a gallon for farm diesel there. And I got bad news for him based on the report I saw today. Uh, it's going to get more expensive than that. A new John Deere combine, a million bucks. Wow, are you kidding me? Uh, and he said everything to repair it, all the new equipment, uh, the farmers can't fix them themselves. they got to bring them in to get fixed because uh, they're all computerized. Uh, just a mechanic, $175 an hour to work on farm equipment. Yeah, food prices are far from done and going higher. Pizza Radio News Hour, we'll be back after the break. 800-951-0592, Patriot Radio News Hour, Joe Jaquin, Jason Walker, uh, crude oil now up almost $6. Uh, the, uh, the, again, this is NYMEX crude, $115 a barrel. Brent crude, almost now $122 a barrel. Unleaded gas, $3.45. Uh, anybody, now, I didn't see it here in Arizona. If, if you saw a drop in gasoline prices, go get it while you can because it's going to be very, very short lived here. Uh, at $3.45 on wholesale gas, uh, you're probably looking for $65. Something like that at the pumps. Uh, that's at least here in Arizona. You guys can adjust for wherever you may be. Uh, but but again, uh, Brent crude now almost back to that hundred and thirty dollar a barrel. Nymex right behind at a hundred and fifteen dollars a barrel. And, and I'm going to say this: I don't. It's too early. I'm starting to get worried about housing. And I know it, and, and especially here in Arizona. Even though uh, we suffered mightily the last housing crash, people have really bought into it. And, it's, and, there, and I don't want to say bought into something that, that isn't true. There's been a huge shortage of housing. Housing prices here in Arizona are insane for Arizona. Just absolutely insane. But all of a sudden, there's been a major downshift in the buying of homes. Uh, there was yesterday we had an unexpected plunge in existing home sales. Uh, this morning we had new home sales, which also they thought was supposed to rise. Like people, you know, hey, rate hikes are coming. Let's get in because this is a this. By the way, just so you know, this is a February number. So this would have been uh, before the rate hikes, right? Let's get in and buy, lock in uh, before the rate hikes. Uh, home, new home sales uh, actually fell. What made it worse is the January number, which they initially reported down at 4.5%, actually fell 8.5%. So think about this. New home sales in January down 8.5%. February, they fell another two and a, uh, two more percent from that number, uh, and and now they're saying that as far as new home sales, uh, they're down for the ninth straight month in a row. The average new home sale price topped five hundred thousand uh, dollars for the first 
time ever as mortgage applications continue to to tumble. And Jason, we're going to get to that point, right? Where's that tipping point where, uh, especially now with the the huge jump in rates, by the way, the mortgage rates now, uh, 4.5%. Which, you know, you kind of laughed 20 years ago. That was, that would have been unheard of. Four and a half percent mortgage rates. Uh, but you're talking about mortgage rates that a year ago were about three percent. They're now four and a half percent. Uh, and all of a sudden this demand destruction, is it going to lead to a collapse in housing prices? I don't know, Joe. With the inflation, it seems like it's, too expensive to lower the home prices. So like, I think your demand destruction is going to play here where I don't think the housing prices drop. I think they go stagnant. They go sideways. And uh, the, the mortgage rates for, for people are just, just rose this week suddenly for most most uh, borrowers to four, four and three quarters. Uh, and I, I, from what I can tell you, it might be 5% before the next rate hike, depending on how soon they do the rate hike. So, so people are looking well, at again, 5%. Well, again, remember, the, the, next, the next hike scheduled for May, they're now essentially telegraphing a 50 basis point hike in May. Uh, the next meeting after that is June. They're saying another 50 basis points. Uh, and, and, and again, we don't know. Yes, obviously, home new homes are not going to go back to 130,000. Can they stay at these records? I think the best case for how this would be the best case is is housing prices, the rise in prices uh, abates. In other words, hey, we're not going to see housing go up another 25%. Uh, the question's going to be, do prices fall from here? And here's the other big question. Can people afford to move? With these new higher interest rates, I mean, can you imagine somebody's like, "Hey, I I, I want to move out of this house, but man, I'm in this house at three percent, and and I, you know, I want to move up." Usually, when people move, they're moving up. I want to move up to a bigger house or a nicer neighborhood or whatever it may be. I can't afford the house I want in that neighborhood with interest rates or mortgage rates at five percent or five and a half percent or six percent. It's going to be. Oh, really? Housing's got to be interesting this year, without a doubt. I know this. We know fuel and energy to cool. You know, cooling your home in the summer here in Arizona is going to be so costly. Yep. It is going to get outrageously expensive. The grocery store is going to get outrageously expensive housing is the one thing that i'm not sure here's the problem home prices despite this new home sales nine straight monthly declines new all-time high price to jason's yep. point rents new all-time record high prices there as well jason yeah i think if there's going to be a price a downward price it's going to be the biggest owners in the world like the black rocks if they decide to start flushing property then you're going to see the, the 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 price crash. But I have a feeling, Joe, this is all about moving everybody into renting, and you'll see a sideways, you know, with inflation. Let's just say inflation twenty percent, and you get one percent or two percent price hikes on on the housing eventually because the, the prices will stop going up. That's that's a house that's a house crash. I said this last year, Joe. We we talked many times. I said I, th- I think that you'll see the price. You know, we we'll say we we'll say housing goes up five percent in twenty twenty two, and you have a four hundred thousand dollar house at the end of the year. Hey, yeah, my house is four hundred twenty thousand. That's that's pretty cool. But if, if inflation's 20% and you have to pay the taxes on that place and all the damage, anything that goes bad on the house, you have to pay for all that stuff, that's that's a housing crash, Joe, with the house prices yeah, going up. Yeah, well, I'm going to tell that. you this. You, 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 you brought up something that I think could very well happen. The only people buying houses could be investors. That could yes. be it. Because they know, hey, I'm just going to turn this into a rental property. Correct. Exactly, Joe. That's why that rentals rental absolutely prices absolutely be exactly what we experience here is the people buying the houses. And again, you know, when you think about, it, you're like, what? Well, what does that mean from three percent to to five percent? You know, it's like, you know, it's, okay, yeah, I know that's a big jump percentage wise, but. You know, what are we talking about payment-wise? 
you're talking well over an extra thousand dollars a month on a on a five hundred thousand dollar home. Your payments. That's how much your payments have increased just on the rate hikes. And 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 all of a sudden that home, hey, five hundred thousand seemed outrageous. Right? Uh, okay, I got my, my parents let me borrow the money to make the down payment. But now all of a sudden, man, I can't afford the extra $1,000 a month to make that pay. I can't afford that home. Yep. And, and then what are you stuck with? Well, you're stuck with, well, hopefully an investor will buy it and rent it to me uh, at a number that's more affordable. Right, Joe. That's right. Uh, and, and there's some weird things going on. Uh, you know, I've been watching the Evergrande thing in China. Now, that's Chinese property, but it's this is a worldwide economic system we're in. Some unnamed third party went into Evergrande yesterday and, and took $2.1 billion cash out of their books. Yeah, yeah that's, uh, that's our money. And they won't say who they are. Yeah, Joe, there's some weird that, stuff going on with property, man. I, I don't think people are going to be buying properties. I think the prices stay put or they even go up. I think we're going to keep seeing it. We'll see what happens. We'll keep our eye on it. I think that's the, for me anyway, that's the only wild card here to how bad things get. Uh, and again, to Jason's point, everything else is going to go up. Everything. You name it, it's going to cost you more. Uh, how about this? Carl Icahn. Now, Carl Icahn, he's one of these billionaires. Uh, he's on the TV all the time. Uh, and he was on CNBC yesterday saying, I've got everything hedged. He goes, we have the strongest hedges against the long positions ever. So what he's saying is, I'm short Wall Street, and I'm short it big time. We try to be activists to get an edge. I am negative, and as you can hear Short term, I don't even predict. I have no idea if Jay Powell and the central bank can even engineer a soft landing. I think there's going to be a rough landing. Inflation is a terrible thing when it gets going. And there's no accountability in corporate America. You have some very fine companies, some very fine CEOs, but far too many are not up to the task for what lies ahead here in America. Wow. That's Carl Icahn just basically saying, hey, there are some good CEOs out there, but the vast majority of Jason, they can't deal with what he thinks is coming. Right. Joey, we're, we're in unprecedented situations, when, especially in America, being the world trade currency. You know, the last time we had inflation like this, they had a couple of tricks. So these tricks are gone. So now you've got to come up with new tricks if they want to kick the can down the road, so to speak. So I think we're going to see some weird stuff. I mean, uh, I was looking at the stock markets of these, these third world nations or these, these nations that have hyperinflation going on, like uh, Zimbabwe, Venezuela, and, so, and some other, these other countries with 40% and 50% inflation. Their stock markets are just rocketing upward, Joe. Rocketing upward. Because, well, I might as well put it there. Right, Joe? Might as well put it there. I mean, is that what we're seeing? I'll put it in a house. I know that housing prices are, uh, it, it isn't really working out for me there, but it's better than holding it in the bank. You know, I, I'm gonna, you know people are just thirsty to put it anywhere but just sitting in the bank, Joe. So I, I, we, we might see the stock market kind of trail upwards. Doesn't mean there's any value there. But, I mean, Joe, that's, that's why I like gold and silver. Gold and silver is just so less stressful when it comes to, to holding value, Joe, because we know it's going to do. It's going to follow inflation. That's, that's why you buy it. Yeah, it follows inflation. It, and it also is the asset that performs when all the other assets aren't. I want to remind you how overvalued the equity markets are. We'll use the... Now, there's so many indicators, but let's use the Buffett indicator. Everyone knows Warren Buffett. By the way, uh, Warren Buffett finally bought something. Hasn't been buying anything. Uh, bought an insurance company. 
That's why I keep telling everybody to call my son. Believe me, he is going to have you in such better shape. 602-909-9048. Uh, because, uh, well, he works for the best one of them at Northwestern Mutual. But neither here nor there. Understand what's happened. Over the past couple of years, there's been this avalanche of liquidity, right? The Fed is the Fed's balance sheet has more than doubled. Uh, look at what we've done with the national debt. Uh, the the Buffett indicator is a really simple one. It's the valuation of domestic equity, so stock valuation to nominal GDP. It's a really simple indicator. It's actually, it ended 2021 at a level that they didn't even think was possible, which was 2.55 on the Buffett indicator scale. They actually had to change the chart. Because he's had this, this chart. Buffett uses this chart. He's been using it for decades. They had to change the chart. Because they didn't think it actually could get this overvalued. Yeah. I'll tell you what it's got to get back to just to get to where it was at the dot-com bubble. 800-951-0592. Gold's up 10, 1932. Silver's up 20 cents here, 2508. Uh, the Dow is down several hundred points as crude oil. And again, I told you when it happened. You know, crude hit hit uh, 130, had that big uh, fall. Uh, gold hit an interday all-time record high, had that big fall. And I said, it's all paper, smoke, and mirrors. They're, they're coming right back. Uh, and that's exactly what's going to happen. And, and the problem is not only are they going to go right back, they're going to go a lot higher. Both, both, uh, both gold, silver, oil, all of those commodities uh, are going to go a lot higher. But before the break, we are talking about the Buffett indicator. And there's lots of them. All of them are the same, which is equities, stock prices are so overinflated. Uh, we have huge bubbles in the bond market. We have huge bubbles in the equity market, all caused by the Fed. All of it. And they're easy money created out of thin air policies. This is why we have this hyperinflation problem. And really, it's not even hyperinflation. I got to, it's stagflation, which is even worse. Which means no matter what, your, your pay increases aren't keeping up. To Jason's point, your house may go up, but it ain't going up enough to offset the cost of maintaining that household. All of these things are huge problems. But I didn't even know, and I knew it was crazy. I didn't know it was this crazy. If equity prices dropped 25% in 2022, so that'd be, I mean, that's pretty steep. 25% decline in equity prices this year. That would only bring the Buffett indicator back to the peak it hit during the dot-com bubble. So think about this. A decline of 25% only gets them back to the peak of the dot-com bubble, Jason. Well, and I think the other side of this, Joe, is they're hoping with the inflation, as, as, as far as that, that indicator, that that will make the, the assets appear more valuable because you inflate the price up. So if the market comes down 10%, inflation, which just, say, drives the company's price up 20%, hey, there's 30%. In one year, oh yay! Yeah, that it, it, it's, it's a completely fake way of rigging those numbers, Joe. And I, that's why I think they really want inflation to be bad right now. I, I think this is their fix for their problems right now: is to just let inflation go and try to pay off debt and, and devaluations like the Buffett indicator. You can make that come back to a more reasonable level by inflating the the price of, of these things up. Oh hey, hey, IBM's worth more now because it's worth twenty percent more because. Because uh, all the assets they own and the company itself is worth more because everything's, you know, just like that price of a house is up 50% in a couple of years. Well, so is IBM's property and all their assets. And then, Joe, Joe then you have the, the market price goes you know, sideways or down a little bit. Yeah, that solves a lot of problems, doesn't it, Joe? At least, you know, for the numbers. Yep. 
And, and remember what the flip side. This is, and to Jason's point, and I, I've been trying to make this point, this is the good part, the stagflation part of this cycle. This is the good part. This is where gold and silver go up at a reasonable pace. What you're planning for, what you're getting ready for, is the bad part. When the destruction finally comes, I just want people to understand how big the fall is going to be. If it falls 25%, which would be horrible, you're still only back to the peak of the dot-com bubble. You're going to see when this thing is all said and done, and I use Japan of the 80s. The Nikkei went from 40,000 to 10,000 and then stayed at 10,000 for almost 30 years. It's happened even to, now. It's happened to the S&P. Even now it's nowhere close to being back. It's happened to the S&P twice. You know, in the 1929, it, it came down. It didn't come back for 27 years. And then in 1968, the S&P came down. didn't come back till 1993. But it, it happens, Joe. It happens even if you are the world reserve currency holder, Joe. Yeah, and this is going to happen because that, that mantle that we're on is going to be a shared mantle at best going forward. So I think it could be an even uglier number. How about this, though, today? We've talked about nickel. Man, we've learned more about nickel than any of us ever wanted to know. Today, it was up, up lock limit today, up 15%. Uh, it had been down lock limit uh, for like the last five days in a row. But here's what's important in this article, and this uh, uh, zero hedge, for those of you that want to know. What the traders are saying at the London Metals Exchange. They said that uh, all traders agreed that they're now following the lead of the Shanghai Futures Exchange. Uh, London Metals CEO Matthew Chamberlain said that the Shanghai price is a good guide as they discuss the normalization of the nickel market. And again, and I point this out, and, he, and I think all of you listening can understand why am I pointing this out. Because now you're getting the money. Right? The money guys, the traders, the head of the London Metals Exchange saying, hey, we need to look to China for where the nickel price needs to be, Jason. There you go. Yeah, there you go. I mean, it, was, it was a big investor in China that kind of caused the nickel market to go crazy, right? Well, there was a short. And again, the guy that was short, in fairness to that, the guy, he, he's a billionaire. Uh, but how did he become a billionaire? Well, he owns the largest aluminum or, or nickel, I'm sorry, a nickel mines in the world. And usually when you own like a, 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 a commodity base, whether it's oil, nickel, wheat, right, you tend to short it because you want to protect yourself against price drops. So he was short. And then, of course, the market ran away from him, and he was he just wasn't smart enough. Somebody uh, that was managers and his buddy should have covered those shorts and, and, and not let him take the big defeats that he took, which obviously, uh, by that time, when he finally closed those short positions out, it caused the nickel price to explode. But but neither here nor there. I got the funny feeling. Why do I got the feeling this is going to happen in the gold and the silver markets? We're going to see a nickel market reaction where the banks get caught, they're eventually going to have to liquidate out, and you're going to see just unheard of price movements uh, in those markets. That's just what's going to happen. And again, because way too much money's been created, Jason. Well, Saudi Arabia looks like they want to sell their oil and yuans, right? Oil and, and yuans. Look to Shanghai when it comes to nickel prices. Yeah. We kind of know where the sun's setting, don't we? Pacer Radio News Hour. We'll be back right after the break. 
800-951-0592. Uh, by the way, uh, we talked Evergrande. The Financial Times is reporting Evergrande has seized $2 billion uh, and is refusing to pay dollar-denominated bonds. Yep. Uh, right now, uh, these bonds represent twenty billion dollars uh and i'll just give you uh the u.s and uk company saba capital redwood capital management ashmore uh are now meeting with lawyers to work on a, a legal strategy here uh the chinese developer all told jason owes 300 billion dollars yep. uh but apparently yesterday uh, according to the Financial Times, they seized two billion dollars uh, and are not making what I'll call dollar-denominated bond payments. Of course, the bondholders are saying, "Hey, wait a minute! That you can't do that. We're first in line. We get paid first. Well, I guess you know, in, in China, well, right up until we say uh, we don't care." And we're going to take care of our own needs. So again, and again, I'm watching these things. You know, you do you know Russia defaulting now? Evergrande saying, "Hey, you know what? Twenty billion dollars of foreign currency debt payments. Yeah, we're not paying that either. And oh, by the way, uh, we're seizing all of that cash to prevent that from happening." Uh, Jason, this is going to this, this this whole thing. In, in in the scope, at the same time, you have this this stagflationary cycle, and the central bank is supposed to be taking the punch bowl away. Uh, it's, who's going to buy these bonds? Of course, now uh, it looks like bondholders may be totally wiped out here. I'm telling you, I think the Fed's going to be buying all that stuff, Joe. That's what I think. But by the end of this year sometime, they're going to buy all this stuff. I'm telling you, they're, 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 that balance sheet, it will shrink for a little while, and then it's going to explode. You know, you're you're going to see some crazy stuff. And, and it's because the Fed has extraordinary powers that uh, other banks and other corporate entities don't have, and that's how they're going to try to to push this thing a little further, Joe. You know, this great reset, whenever it comes, if it's going to be next year or however they're going to uh, unroll the new world order of money, uh, it's, it's going to be extremely painful by how we get there, Joe. And uh, I'll tell you, and again, all of these things, just so you know, this all makes sense. Because we've told you, uh, when this thing is all said and done, uh, there's going to be just a handful of banks. you know, And I don't, I don't know within 50, 100 banks, uh, all the rest of them are going to be gone. Uh, all these defaults and all these uh, credit default swaps, uh, saw an article matter, foreclosures are on the rise here uh, as far as homes go. Uh, things that we got to keep an eye out for. Uh, but this will be, again, part of the cleanup of the mess uh, is going to be the, the digital currency. Your money's now at the Federal Reserve. The only thing you use banks for in the future is going to be a home loan, credit cards, right, auto loans. Uh, and the vast majority of the banks will no longer be necessary uh, and, and wind it down with all of this bad debt and the bail-ins. That's why I keep telling you, don't have excess money uh, in the banks. Right now, I've got, we've been running some 20s at 2250. I've actually taken it off sale on online. Uh, we've got 35 20s left at 2250. That's it. Uh, get them, put them away. Uh, there are still some of the one tenth ounce American gold eagles are two hundred fifty five dollars. You buy fifty or more, uh, two hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, silver, the prices are what they are. Rolls of silver eagles eight hundred and fifteen dollars. You know, rolls of quarters probably the best buy we got on silver net right now are rolls of quarter quarters at two hundred fifty five dollars a roll at eight hundred nine five one. Zero five nine two. This is going to be a huge, and you can almost see it now coming together, right? We we've got inflation now, which obviously something happened over the weekend, where Jay Powell was told, and 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 again, my first belief is is he was told. Gas is going to six, seven, eight bucks a gallon. 
diesel. We are in so much trouble on diesel inventories. Uh, you know, at a you know, diesel could be a dollar a gallon higher than other gas. We know about the food prices, but why do I get the feeling too, Jason, that that they were told Saudi Arabia and UAE are going to start taking Renembi for oil? Yeah, and for all we know, it could be more than just those two countries, Joe. It could be more than that. You know, we don't we don't know what countries are making what decisions. Uh, because they don't report every single one of these things, right? And the more countries that change their mind on dollars, the worse it gets for inflation and dollars coming back here. And, and then you start talking about cracks in these bond markets. Obviously, Russia's first and foremost in that. Evergrande, this story just does seemingly, nobody wants to talk about it, but it's not going away. And all of a sudden now, it's not going to take a lot, especially when the Fed is saying, that they're going to reduce the balance sheet. That we're not buying all these all this bad paper. It will not take very much. And all of a sudden, and again, remember when the hyperspeed takes when the Fed does an about face. And I think that's going to happen, especially now that they're claiming to do fifty basis points at a time. They just made that of they they just brought that about face up. It's going to happen sooner now than if they had just done it 25 basis points at a time, Jason. Yeah, it sure makes the, uh, why didn't they start with 50 basis points to start on the first one? Makes you, it makes it seem like there's some confusion in the Fed, right? Well, the Fed's law, they have no credibility and everybody knows it. And there's a reason they have no credibility because everybody knows they can't fix it. All as they can do is break it and create that demand destruction. And, of course, when that happens, they need to have the next thing ready to go. 800-951-0592. Final segment coming up. 800-951-0592. Patriot Radio News Hour. Uh, the oil inventory reports are out. Uh, API reported a drop of 4 million barrels of crude. Uh, drops in gasoline and distillates, a tiny build in Cushing. Uh, the Department of Energy uh, reported a crude down 2.5 million. They did have a 1.2 million build in Cushing, uh, but gasoline down 3 million barrels. Distillates, that's where your diesel fuel oil is, down 2 million barrels. Uh, crude oil back above 115, and I'm just gonna, I'm just telling everybody. You better get ready. Uh, when it comes to inflation, we haven't seen anything close to where it's going to be. Uh, take the time. Add to your portfolios here. The $20 gold piece. This is the buy of the day. It's the buy of the day. $2,250 at 800 951 uh, we've got 10th ounce American gold eagles too. You know, thinking about, hey, when the digital money comes, you want some, uh, barterable material here, the 10th ounce gold pieces. Cause again, Jason and I are telling you too, when this thing crashes, inflation's not going back to below 2%. We're going to enter into, unfortunately, I think a, a, a decade and to Jason's point, maybe a multi-decade cycle of uh, much higher uh, than normal inflation because, once again, we're going to share the stage uh, with China as far as global dollar reserves go, which is just going to make uh, our dollar weaker, which makes things cost more. Uh, the Dow is down 260 points right now. Uh, gold's at 1931. Uh, silver, uh, 2505 right now. And I'll check in, uh, just one last check on crude oil before we head out here. Uh, crude oil's up 550 right now, just below $115 a barrel. Brent crude, 12160. 12160. Uh, and unleaded gas futures, Jason, $3.45. Uh, so think about this too. Unleaded gas, paper gas is three forty five. Of course, everybody's paying what four fifty, four sixty, four seventy at the pump, Jason. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, I mean, uh, and uh, we'll just well, you know, just, 
it's just crazy, you know, when you watch it happening in real time, it's just like, well, what do you, you get to be speechless after a while, Joe. What, 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 you, what else can yeah. you say? Don't sit on your hands. This is not the time. So, oh, well, I'm going to wait and see what happens. Uh-uh. Don't do that. Don't be a victim of that. You know what's in front of you. You know what you need to do. Trust your instincts. I'm going to tell that. And I've been telling that to everybody lately. Trust your instincts and what is really happening here. Uh, because I, here's the, the problem is I trust my instincts all the time. And usually my instincts, I'm usually right, but it's usually worse than what I think it's going to be, if that makes sense, Jason. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, sometimes you know it's going to happen, but you don't know when it's going to happen. Sometimes you know when it's going to happen, but you don't know what it's going to happen. So, so your uh, instincts is knowing what's going to happen. And uh, sometimes your instincts are way ahead, which is fine. It's better. I've, I've said with gold and silver, Joe, for, for, since I've been on the air, it's better to be one year early than one day late. You know, and that's that's why you got to buy it now.